I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to talk about composite keys and uh, how composite keys are very important, and you should learn how to do composite keys uh, because they exist everywhere in the database world. Uh, there are very few databases that do not have at least one table that has a composite key in it, and that can really, uh, you know, trip you up if you have never run into those before. And so uh, it's very handy to know how to how to identify them, but also how to use them because uh, they can be useful in your databases. And uh, so without further ado, let's get to our composite keys in Microsoft Access. Okay, so for this example, I'm using the same database we've been using for a lot of our other examples. And uh, I'm going to create a table design. I go to the Create menu and go to Table Design. And then we're going to build a table here, very simple one. Um, that uses one key just to uh, just to show you what you probably already have worked with. So I'll put an auto number in there, which is what a lot of people do, and that just says on the first row put one, on the second row put two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we'll say client ID on the first uh, in the first uh, column and client name in the second column, and then uh, we'll put client type in the third column. And, and there you go, we've got three columns in a client table with one column that makes the primary key. Now the, the primary key is how we identify um, that each row is unique. So if we have a number in our client ID, say number one, it means that you can't use number one again on any other rows. Um, and so if I save that, I set that as the primary key and I save it, then you can see that the auto number comes up and if I type in the client name, it'll start a new record and I'll say Candy Corp and you see that it automatically gave it a one and the auto number uh, will make sure that, you know, number one will never be used again and it'll, it'll, uh, Increment and keep adding new IDs uh, for each for each um, a client that I put in there, and so that's how a key works. So whenever we look at this table, we know that the thing that makes this row unique is the client ID. And so if I try to type in the over the auto number, I can't do that, and uh, and so the auto number will keep it as a nice ID. But I can go back. And I can actually set the auto number. I can change that data type and just change it to a number, which will turn it into a long integer, as you see here. And so now I have that ID in there, and it's still a key, which is important to recognize. It's still a key, but it's just a number now. And so if I go in and, uh, you know, I, I start like a new record at number three, then that's going to be fine. Um, so I'll put in, say, lumber uh, limited, and uh, I'll, I'll make that as a lumber company, and that's just fine. But if I go and I want to add another number one row, and I put computers, Inc., and that's a computer company, and I try to um, tab down to the next row, you can see it gives this big long message that goes off both, both sides of my screen here, but it says you're putting in a duplicate value and that's going to break the, the, uh, the, the key and so it won't let me put it in there. So I have to change it to four or something else. I could put a thousand in there or whatever, it doesn't matter, as long as it's not used anywhere else. And so that's how a single key works, a primary key. And so that's based off of a single field and uh, that's uh, the way that most people understand keys. They've only ever seen that part of it. But there is another way uh, that you can do your keys in Microsoft Access, and that is uh, to, to use more than one field to identify that that row is unique. And in fact, you can use two fields or five fields. It doesn't really matter. 
but the way that you can see it is as follows. So I'll add client ID like I did before with a number and I'll add a division uh, and then I'll add like a division name. So this is going to be a table of divisions um, which might belong to the clients that we saw before. Um, and so now we can see well there's a primary key for client ID but we know if that we might have more than one division for client ID number one. And so in order to get around that, what we're going to do is we're going to select two rows and then we're going to click our primary key. And you'll see that the little key icon uh, goes over both of those, um, both of those columns uh, in the gray there. And so now we have a table with a, with a composite key that has two fields that, that define how each row is unique. And that's what we want to see. Um, so some people might, you know, do the keys another way, but this is how we're going to do it as a composite key today. So we can say client ID one has division A, and we'll just call that division A, and that's going to be one row. And then if we say we can use client ID one again, unlike we did in the previous example but we have to make sure that it's a different division. So the combination of those values is what makes it unique. So we've got, uh, then, then we can have say client ID two and they have different naming. So division A one, and it might be a completely different division, uh, the way that divisions work. Uh, but the idea is the same that those first two fields uh, are going to make the uniqueness of each row. And so as you can see, I can continue to add divisions so long as the combination of client ID and the division is unique. And so um, you could have uh, an A division for client 2 because that would also be unique. Um, but as you can see, we have uh, um, two, in, two divisions in client for client ID 1, but if I try to add uh, 1A again, and I put division double A in there as the name, um, you'll see that it gives me the error again because uh, I've tried to recreate 1A and that already exists in there. And so maybe that was a mistake I made. So maybe it's 1 and then double A is the division. And there you can see now it lets me put that into the table. So it's a duplicate key or composite key in this case. You could have three columns or four columns, but we have two. And that's how uh, you can do your composite keys uh, in Microsoft Access. And once you start looking for the composite keys, you'll notice that they start affecting all kinds of things that maybe you never saw before, like queries and reports and things like that, and how the data all comes together uh, can be very much affected by composite keys. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on composite keys in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please make sure you give the video a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, click the bell when you see the bell, and put comments in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.